Hey guys, welcome back to this belt building series where we're constructing a basic Western belt from start to finish, showing you every tool that I use, as well as workarounds in case you don't have some of those tools. Completing any project is not just one skill, but it's a stacking of small skills. In part number one, we looked at leather selection, belt measurements, and different ways to cut your specific ends. Then we came back for a bonus section where we tooled up this pattern in case you don't want a basic belt but want to add a little tooling in there. So I hope you caught along with that where we went through start to finish tooling this using just basic tools. Now it's time for some die and finish work. There's so many questions about die and finish work and it can be a real source of frustration when you're learning leather work. But I'm gonna show you a few products and techniques that have worked for me to get nice even coverage that stays on. Let me know as we go through here if you have any big aha moments or any questions that you wanna go deeper on. Remember, there's lots of options when it comes to die and finish products and there's no one right way to do it. This is just what has worked for me and I hope it works for you. So let's head over to the die station and get started. The first product we're gonna be working with is Phoebe's Pro Dye. Now I've chosen golden brown for a color because it's a lighter color, and that can be one of the trickiest things to do is get even coverage with a light color. Now we're gonna come up with seeing a lot of the natural patina in this leather, some of the wrinkles and things like that that are part of the leather because this is from a cowhide, but what we don't wanna have is blotchy dye color because of our techniques of applying that. So that's where we're gonna really look today at how to apply this. Now what I'm using for an applicator is a foam chip brush. This is available at any hardware store. Uh, not, not that big of a deal to get, they're fairly inexpensive, and I really like the coverage that they get as opposed to the little daubers that often will come in with your, uh, with your die jar. I'm just not a big fan of the coverage as opposed to these. So I've taken some of that dye and put it in this wide mouth jar uh, just to make it easier to get at. Less chance of me spilling and making a mess. I've put a paper down here on my bench just because sometimes you do get some messes going on. That's gonna happen. But when we use this dye, I always get that on there and then dab it off. We don't want too much at one time because control is gonna be a big thing as I move along here. So I'm gonna start at one end. And what I'm watching for is how quick that dye is absorbing and being consistent with how much I keep going back over. And you notice as I move down here, I'm moving down and just taking these little short strokes back over where I've just laid that die. I'm not just running a big long streak here. I'm just barely backing up over where it's just laid down. Getting that full coverage side to side on that belt. But I'm laying down new coverage and then going right back over here. Again, watching for how dark that gets when I first lay it down, as well as how quick it's absorbing. And I'm wanting to be consistent with how dark that's getting. I don't wanna stay in one spot and just keep going over and over in one spot, but I also don't wanna come down here and then not go back over as much as I was before. Does that make sense? So if I was to move down, just cover that one time, but then keep going. See how that's really light there? That's why I'm being consistent with that overlap. And I'm gonna show you in a second how this works on tooling as well, because we're gonna do the same thing on our tooled portion that we tooled up in the bonus section. There, we've made it all the way down there. Now, I wanna show you how, if we look back, this is where all the big portion of the mistakes come. People get down to an end and they start looking back and go, oh, it's a little lighter right there. Especially if we look back here, oh, it's a little lighter. 
I need to come back and touch up. That is where I see the majority of the mistakes. So this is another scrap piece that I have here because I want to show you what a lot of people wind up doing. This is a mistake we've all made. If, you, <laughs> if you've been messing with dye, I know you've done this with a light color um, because it's what we all try to do. And that's when you wind up with some blotchy projects. And so this is one of those basic skills that we can look at that hopefully if you haven't done dye work yet and this is your first time, you can learn from my mistakes on it and not have to make this one yourself. <laughs> so this is an avoidable mistake here. As we move down here, it starts to lighten up at the front where we started. And what everybody wants to do, and I've done it myself, this is why I've finally come up with this technique because I come back here and go, oh, it's lighter there. I need to darken that up. Then you look down, oh, it's lighter down here. I need to darken that, and that's light here. I need to darken that. Oh, this is a little bit lighter up in here. I can't get it even. Where does this need to go? And the problem with doing this touch up back and forth is now we've laid down way more dye in certain spots, what we thought were light spots, and now when those dry, you're gonna wind up with a dark blotch there. And it's a never ending cycle as you're trying to even it up as you go, and all the while you're just creating a whole bunch of inconsistencies. Whereas here, we let that dry and let it soak in, and it's kind of absorbing in different spots at different times, and that's okay. We're gonna let this one sit just a minute, and I'm gonna bring over our tool option and do the same coverage on here before we go to this next step. It's right here, no different. Now, if I was stitching this belt and running a stitch groover, this is maybe for more, some of the more advanced students on here, but if you're running a stitch groover, I would run that before I do my die work. And a stitch groover is just a groove you run right along that edge that your stitch lays in. But I like to take that leather out of there and that way I have die work down in my stitch groove. If you run that stitch groove after your die, you wind up with kind of a really bright line from that natural color leather being exposed again. All right, same thing, consistencies all the way down. So I'm slowly overlapping as I lay that down. You can see why we put the paper down. Created a big old mess here anyways. Usually I don't make that big a mess, but between watching trying to stay in frame, I really slopped that around. <laughs> okay, we're gonna set that one aside here. Now let's look as this one, die, that die is soaking in there. You can see there's still some wetter spots. Some other ones are drying in there. We got a few nasty spots here. Those are dark spots because I let this run under another piece of paper over here that has a bunch of dye on that. Uh, so those ones, those are just mistakes from a careless workspace, not from what our actual dye work is here. Now as that's starting to dry, it's not dried all the way. I haven't cut this video. We're right in time here so you can see how long this is taking. But the next product I wanna put over here, we're just a couple minutes after putting this on, but this is uh, Phoebe's their 100% pure Neats foot oil. Now, the Neats foot oil, I'm gonna use, just use a scrap piece of sheepskin for an applicator here. You can use a little rag or anything you want to to get this on here. It's nothing, nothing fancy about this when it comes to the application of it. Um, but we're going to start down this end here. I'm going to lay that on there. Just a good generous coat. And I just kind of work in circles as I move down there. And that's just to make sure I have good coverage. It's avoiding any 
streakiness or anything like that. If you just run full length on something, that's when you're really inviting all those streaks to come in there. So I'm keep working in those circles. Now with the purpose of this oil, that's going to get in there and really help grab all that oil and draw out evenly throughout that leather. Um, and I've found this to help even that dye work up even more when I oil after my dye. I used to oil before trying to even out the moisture in that belt and that helped a bit but then I found that coming in after seems to really help um, even more. I like the results of it a lot better. Now this one here that we dyed, you can see it's still a little inconsistency in colors as that leather's absorbing that dye and the spots where that leather was a little drier absorb that a little quicker. But now we're going to come over with this oil. Same thing, nice even coverage here. And that's going to allow that to pull that dye even throughout our leather and ideally when this dries we're going to be left with just the natural patina of that leather and seeing some of that, but not blotchiness in our actual dye. So we're going to let this sit. I'm going to give this a while. We're going to watch that color. It kind of is going to lighten back up as that oil absorbs in there. And you could let this sit overnight and come back the next day. No harm in that. There's no hurry to get to the next step. Um, but this does need to sit in here. I would say to be safe, give that at least 30 minutes, probably an hour before we even think about coming back to this next step. Now that oil's had time to dry in, you can see where that's really evened out that dye work. We can see some of the natural patinas in the leather, but no big blotches, right? So we're able to even that out just by that little technique of going back over top as we're moving along there with that dye. Our next product is going to be Resiline. It's another Feebeans product. This is what I've found that I really prefer. This is going to help bring a richness to this color as well as seal that off. That's a big key in what we're doing here. Now, I like putting this on with scrap sheepskin. I'm going to show you how I do that. And we're also going to show you how to do it if you don't have a scrap of sheepskin. So I hear that quite a bit. I'm just going to put a nice generous coat on here, working in those circles a little bit to avoid any streaking. You can see it kind of foams up a little bit as we go there. And now we're going to let that sit. Now this is something that you can even put a heavier coat on and it's not going to hurt anything. The only thing with some of those bubbles, I don't want to leave big bubbles sitting on it. So that's why I kind of went back over just to brush down any of the big bubbles. But there's still some in there and it's kind of white and milky down in there. That's fine. Leave it just like that. Now, on this belt, where that's going to be our resist, and I'm going to come back and show you how to antique this piece that's tooled up as well. But let's use this same product on our plain basic simple belt here and so for that one I'm going to go ahead and take my resiline put that into a different jar here that I can get at a little bit easier because again I know a lot of you may not have scrap of sheepskin so let's get another one of these chip foam brushes from the hardware store I'm going to put it uh, dip that in there we're going to come and I'm just going to work down this kind of in those circles again. See, I don't want it just kind of sitting up on there, so it's, this is putting a lot of it down. Working my way down here where that's pooled up like that a little bit. Kind of come and get that. Let that foam soak that up just a little bit. Work down in these circles again. 
Again, getting rid of any streaking that we're going to have. Worked in those circles. I'm gonna come that second, kind of that nice, even in our coat up here, rolling right down it. Now we talked about the color. That really has added a richness to that color there. And you can see it's got a little bit of a sheen to that. We're going to let that sit and dry. We need that to even up and dry out there. Anywhere we had those standing bubbles, I just kind of knocked those bubbles down. But now that's going to seal in all that dye and all that oil. That's the biggest thing here is that, that dye is going to come off simply using a product that's actually made to seal that in is really going to help. Our one that's just straight dyed we can set that one aside. That one can dry up. This one here where we're going to antique that, I want this resiline to dry up and set in there and this is going to act as a resist. Now what a resist means is that our antique that we're going to come back and use is going to be a paste. So this is a dark brown antique finish and you can see that kind of nasty looking paste in there. If we're to put that on raw leather stuff that has not been treated with a resist it's going to absorb this really dark and it'll dye the whole thing what we want to do is have just this dark brown show up in our cuts in those decorative cuts our bevel lines the backgrounds we want to kind of bring a little pop to all that detail that we tooled in in that and that's how we're going to do it but we need to let this resist set in first then we'll come back add some antique and one last final step on that one. Now that resiline's had time to dry, on the safe side, give yourself an hour. You can, it can dry a lot faster than that as well, but on the safe side, an hour and you come back and you'll be completely fine. Now back to this antique that we were talking about, I put a glove on because this will get all over your hands and stain your hands as well, but I'm gonna get down in there. This is another little scrap of sheepskin. You can use a rag or whatever you happen to have for that. And I'm going to go ahead, working in these little circles, making sure we're getting down into all of our cuts. And get that smeared in there really well. You'll be amazed at how this will just bring your pattern to life. And it's a simple step to take. Like I say here, a few little products in the right order, and now we're taking our leather work to the next level. All right, now what I like to do is use an old sock. This is just inside out sock. The reason I like this is when you come and wipe this antique back off, I really like the texture on the inside of that sock. It pulls enough of our antique back out. And that's the big key. We want to make sure not to leave too much in there. That's when we'll run into tr troubles with that cracking out and flaking off of there is when you leave too much down in there. But now, see how that's down in our cuts and just really pops up all that detail that you take the time to tool in. But once we get that down there, we take it right off. I don't want to waste time doing that. The longer that sits on there, the more you're inviting the chance of that antique to break through your resist. And then we get look at some other discolorations. But this was a great product. Probably one of my favorite finished products is using antique. Now, we want to seal that in. We don't want to just leave it like that. So our final seal process is coming right back with the resiline. Now, I'm not wanting to 
cut this video. That's why you're going to have to deal with me taking my glove off here because I want you to see how quick I come right back with this. I don't have to let this antique sit overnight or anything like that. I kind of prefer that I don't. I always come right back with my resiline after my antique. Now when we do this, I like to have one of these blue shop towels, just like a blue paper towel. You can get them at most, uh, most of your hardware stores or grocery stores even will carry them. But I really like those for wiping this off here because they hold up as opposed to just your regular paper towels that it can sometimes rip and tear. But we're gonna take our resiline right back across here, a good generous coat. Again, working in those circles. And now immediately, I'm gonna wipe right straight across that. And you can see that's pulled a little bit of the extra antique off of there, off of our smooth leather. And then it's mixed in with our antique that's down in those cracks. So you can see how it's kind of milky and dark down in those cracks and cuts. And what that is, is the resiline has now mixed with our antique and is gonna set up and seal that in there so we don't get that cracking and flaking and breaking out of your antique. Now we have beautiful colored belt sealed up and ready to go on to the next step. Keep an eye out for the next video where we go through final construction, looking at skills like finishing edges, attaching hardware, as well as a really big bonus one, how to line a belt without using a sewing machine. I know that's a big deal getting started. We don't want a ton of sewing on a belt, but you can line one where it lasts and holds up for years to ton of wear without using a sewing machine. And I'm gonna show you how in the next video. I look forward to seeing you there.